Hey, what's up? Stephanie, the English coach here from EnglishFullTime.com. In this video, I'm going to be answering the very popular question, will studying English abroad in an English speaking country make me fluent? Well, the simple answer is no, it won't make you fluent, but it can definitely help or maybe it won't, right? So we're gonna talk about what this depends on, how you can have the best experience possible and make the most of your trip if you decide to go. And maybe by watching this video, you'll also learn that, hey, you don't need to study English abroad to reach your fluency goals. So first of all, Lots of people think that by studying English abroad, that is going to make them fluent. Now, why do we think this? We think this because it's almost like common sense, right? You, you think if I'm just immersed in the language long enough, my brain will be able to absorb it and process it and boom, I will be fluent, right? And in theory, that is correct. By being immersed in a language, you will absorb it, your brain will absorb it, and you will achieve fluency. The problem is that when you go study abroad, it's often not the experience a lot of people are expecting. You end up being in a class with a bunch of other English learners, many of whom probably have worse English than yours. Maybe some of them have better English, but basically, when you study English abroad in a traditional setting, which almost all language institutes have this traditional type of teaching, you're basically going to have a teacher, a classroom, worksheets, homework. It's almost going to be the same exact experience that you could have in the country where you live. So what you're really trying to do is immerse yourself in the language, not necessarily go for the classes because you can do classes where you're at, you can do classes online, you can do courses online, but you're going to immerse yourself in the language. So it's going to be super important that if you study English abroad, you need to find ways to connect with the native English speakers that are there, the locals, okay? Now this can be a lot you know, harder than you might think, but it doesn't have to be, right? I've heard stories of people you know, going into stores just to talk with the associates there and ask questions to practice their English, or you could try to find an internship position while you're studying, depending on how long your trip is. If it's like two weeks, then that's not enough time. But if you're going there for six months or more, my advice is really just get yourself away from the other students and find ways to interact with the locals because that interaction is what will improve your fluency. It's not the classes, it's not the worksheets, it's not even what you learn about the grammar because you need as much interaction as possible. You need as many opportunities as possible to speak. And the schools, what they do is they advertise to get you to their program, right? Because it's a business. Hello, they're trying to make money, okay? They get you to go into their programs, but they're not always thinking about your extracurricular activities or how to help you connect with the community around you. So that's gonna be on you. And there are so many people that spend thousands of dollars to go study abroad, and then the experience just is not what they expected because they're like, wait, I'm just in school again. I'm just doing worksheets again. I'm just doing homework. I could have done this back home and I'm with a bunch of other English language learners and we're all struggling with the same thing. How is this supposed to help me? Okay. So these are things you need to consider when you are studying abroad. You can't depend solely on the program and on the teachers and all of that. You are going to have to branch out and do things on your own, make friends yourself because that's what it's going to take. So from my personal experience, in 2013, I went to study Spanish in Argentina. I did a semester long program, so it was about four months. And it was interesting because I did some classes with Argentine people, and then I did some classes with other Spanish learners. Now, my grammar class was very helpful. I did learn a lot of things there, that was awesome. Um, but obviously when you have to go into a store and talk with people, it doesn't matter how much grammar you know if you're too afraid to speak, right? So the cool thing about going abroad is it gives you more opportunities to speak, but in my case, I was, 
too afraid to even take those opportunities, okay? I had a lot of issues with my mindset. So you are gonna have to work on your mindset. And a lot of people don't even realize this. They think, oh, when I go study abroad, I'm gonna speak as much as possible and I'm gonna improve and I'm gonna get fluent. That is exactly what I thought when I applied to the study abroad program in college. I had every intention of going to Argentina for six months and coming back fluent. But did that happen? No, my Spanish did improve, my pronunciation improved, my vocabulary improved, but at the end of those six months, I didn't feel fluent because I still struggled with my confidence. And if you can't speak confidently, that will make it so you don't feel fluent. So basically, even though I was living in Argentina for several months and I had opportunities to speak, I was often too shy to speak. I wouldn't take advantage of those opportunities. And you don't know how you will be in a place until you get there. You can think, oh yeah, I'm gonna take advantage of every opportunity. But then once you're there, you clam up and you don't speak and you don't wanna talk to anybody or you realize, oh my gosh, my English isn't as good as I thought it was or I definitely don't understand people as much as I thought I did. and all of that can be very intimidating. Also, something people never talk about is how your brain gets overwhelmed. When you go from living in your country and speaking your native language every day to living in a foreign country, it's like you go into culture shock. You get so much overwhelm and you know, people's brains handle it differently. I shut down basically. Okay. I didn't want to speak Spanish, practice it, learn it, anything. And it was weird because my lifelong dream was to go to Argentina and learn that language and become fluent because my family was from Argentina and I didn't learn the language growing up. So even though that was my dream and I felt like I had all this motivation, the second I got into the country practically, I was just like, oh my gosh, my brain got so overwhelmed, it shut down. I didn't, like I said, I didn't want to study Spanish. I didn't want to speak Spanish. I didn't want to practice. So that is a reality. You do not know how you're going to respond in a new environment until you get there. And again, you can have all the best intentions in the world to practice, but when you get there, you might be so exhausted from the trip, from the homework, from the schedule, from the traveling, from everything that you shut down. And it's very difficult to control that when it happens. So personally for me, I don't feel like I achieved fluency after studying abroad for six months. I lived in Argentina for five years and I'm fluent now, but I'm still improving. I'm still learning new things, you know, but what really made the difference for me was my confidence. When from one day to the next, I had this shift in my way of thinking, in my mindset, and I was so tired of not being confident in Spanish, I just decided enough was enough. And I said, okay, from now on, I don't care about my mistakes. I don't care about any of that. I'm just gonna open my mouth and speak and whatever falls out, falls out. That is good enough for me, okay? Ever since I changed my way of thinking about my own language skills, that's really what made the difference for me when it came to fluency, because I finally was able to speak freely. You might not realize this, but if you lack confidence, that robs you of your freedom to speak because you're constantly second guessing yourself. You're constantly doubting yourself. You're constantly thinking you're making mistakes when you're not making mistakes, okay? I know all about that because I lived it. Okay, so the last thing I wanna say is just be careful with your decision, whether you decide to study abroad or not. If you go, really prepare and really try hard to make the most of your experience. And, you know, just don't feel like that's the only answer. That's really what I wanna say. Don't feel like your entire future depends on you studying abroad. I can tell you right now that I know a bunch of people who have never set foot in an English speaking country and their English is phenomenal, okay? There are so many ways of achieving fluency, of improving your English and just getting better and speaking with people. You don't even have to study abroad if you don't want to or if you don't have the money to. A lot of people watch videos on YouTube to improve their English because they just don't have money to study abroad, okay? And so the good news is you don't have to study abroad if you can't afford it or if you don't want to or if you don't feel like that's the answer. It's not necessarily the answer. It really depends on each individual and their experience. It depends on the program you go into, the country you go to, the teacher. You can choose your program, you can choose the country that you go to, but you won't be able to choose your teacher. You won't be able to to choose who else is gonna be in the program with you. And you know what? Maybe you get a teacher you don't really like, or maybe you're surrounded with students that you just, you don't really like. <laughs> it could happen, it has happened to people. And 
So just be very careful with this decision. Choose wisely and know that studying abroad is not the answer. It is not that one thing that will make you fluent. You know, as humans, we always think that we just need that one thing, that one extra course or that one extra secret, that one extra hack, that one extra experience, you know? It's like people that buy gym memberships so they can lose weight, but then they never go. They think, oh, if I just get that gym membership, or if I just do that class, or if I just work with that personal trainer, that's the answer. But usually everything starts with yourself. You can improve so much just on your own, but really it comes down to your mindset and what you do with your time. So where I'm at now in my life, I'm studying Portuguese, I'm studying Italian, I love languages, but personally, I don't think I would ever go into a language learning program. I just know so many other methods now that I think are so much more effective. I would only study abroad maybe if I'm studying a language that I would be completely new to like Japanese or Chinese or German. Maybe then I would do an introductory course just to get the basics down and then I would do the rest on my own because at this point in time, I know that for me and the way I learn, I don't like learning in a classroom. I don't necessarily like having a teacher. I'm very independent in the way that I learn and I can consume video after video and then apply what I learn. I wanna talk with other people. I wanna immerse myself in the culture and in the day-to-day -day life. I would rather go to a foreign country and do an internship or work as a volunteer and be connected to the people there than be stuck in a school learning in you know traditional education systems that frankly i don't think work very well anyhow there's lots of information in this video for you to consider and think about what i would love now is if you have studied abroad can you please share your experience in the comments i want to know where you went how long you went for what the experience was like did you enjoy it or actually what did you enjoy and what did you not enjoy what did what happened that was unexpected and would you do it again was it worth it okay because i know for a fact that so many people have had amazing study abroad experiences and it probably sounds like in this video i'm basically saying don't go it's not worth it but the truth is so many people have had amazing study abroad experiences and then other people have had really bad study abroad experiences i've had my own experiences and i've heard about all these other experiences from people but by you sharing your experience in the comments what you're gonna do is you're gonna allow everybody else to read about your experience and then make a better decision okay so if you have studied abroad please share with us please tell us what it was like that would be amazing and if you haven't studied abroad Tell us in the comments, what are you considering? What are you worried about? What are your questions? And I'm sure people can come in and help answer these questions for you and give you advice based on their experience. So let's turn this into a forum, right? Where we can all share our information and experiences and get the answers that we need. All right, so that is it. If you want a guide on practicing your English with native speakers, meeting native English speakers online, interacting with us so you can practice your English, improve your English, learn new vocabulary, build your confidence, etc., I have a guide on my website. I'm going to link it here in the description. I always share this guide because it is literally the most popular one on my entire website, EnglishFullTime.com. That's it, you guys. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.